pictures can explain this nicely. Well, maybe they can quote from the book, but I mean, really explain it according to their own intelligence. Huh? Very, very few. Very few. So, because the process of devotional service, the process of spiritual advancement, is all based on this truth. That's why Krishna gives it the first thing, huh? Because everything else is based on it. So if you don't get that, if you don't understand that, how are you going to understand the rest of the spiritual path? How are you going to understand the mechanism of spiritual advancement if you don't understand consciousness? See? So most spiritual teachers are basing their whole teaching on a very shaky platform. They expect us to simply accept this explanation without being given any reasons or arguments or uh, deeper explanation. And then they want to go on from there, you see? But the whole thing is built on a, a very shaky platform because they have not understood the fundamentals. Just like if I'm a musician and I don't want to practice my scales, huh? oh, it's boring. Da -da 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 -da. Na, 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 you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to practice my scales. It's too much trouble. I want to play Rachmaninoff's third concerto. Well, come on. You're never going to get through Rachmaninoff if you can't play your scales. Isn't it? So it's like that with, with these spiritual teachers. They, they don't want to spend time on the fundamentals about consciousness, about the spirit soul, about the Lord, about the nature of the universe, and so on and so on and so on, the energies and like that. But they want to do, they want to be known as a big authority on spiritual life and about devotional service and that they're so advanced, blah, 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 blah. But they never explain the fundamentals uh, because they don't know the fundamentals. And if you inquire, you will find out. They don't know. So if they don't know the fundamentals, how can they explain the more advanced teachings? See? Everybody wants to talk about love of Godhead and Radha Krishna Nitya Lila and all this advanced stuff. Oh, yes, we're more advanced. But if you ask them to explain the beginning stuff, they can't explain it. Well, what's going on there? That means they're suffering from this particular anartha, that they don't understand the actual path. Uh, they can't explain the underlying mechanism, how consciousness operates by the sum total of impressions in the mind. Uh, and that if we take in only material impressions, we're going to have material consciousness. Therefore, we chant again and again and again and again. And we do the, the RT ceremony and we, we uh, look at the form of the Lord again and again and again and again. Every day, every day, every day, day after day after day. Why do we do it over and over and over and over? To create more and more spiritual impressions. To counteract the material impressions in the mind. It's very simple. But how many people can explain that? How many teachers know that? Huh? How many have actually analyzed consciousness properly? So if you don't know how the path of devotional service is working, huh? if you went to a mechanic and you had a problem with your car, and uh, you say, yeah, you know, it's making a funny noise. And, uh, and he would open up the hood and, and look around and, and say, uh, well, uh, you know, it must be the, uh, uh, the squirrel cage. That's it. It's, it's the squirrel cage is off. Yeah, I have to replace that. Huh? Well, the guy doesn't know anything about how a car engine works. He thinks there's a little squirrel running around and, and making it. You know, this is an extreme example. But, you know, if the guy doesn't know, just like, well, we've had this experience here in, in Chile, go, taking, the, taking the truck to a mechanic and something's wrong and it's making a funny noise or whatever. What was it? The lights didn't work, right? And he says, oh, you're going to have to replace the steering wheel. <laughs> really? This happened? <laughs> so, uh, well, um, I think we want to go talk to the other mechanic down the street. Bye. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's the same with spiritual teachings. If they don't have any idea how consciousness works, if they don't have any idea how the, the mind works, how are they going to 
guide us in the spiritual path, especially in the higher ranges of the spiritual path. So we shouldn't accept this. And finally, Maya Tattva Brahma, illusion about the Lord's external energy, Maya. Well, what is Maya? Maya means literally that which does not exist. And we spoke about that earlier, how things that are temporary don't really exist in the full sense of the term because they have a beginning and an end. That means they are dependent on some previous cause. See? So things that are dependent on a previous cause cannot be said to have real existence or complete existence because their existence is depending on some previous existence. You see? And if we look at that cause, we generally find that that is also an effect of another previous cause and so on. Back, 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 back. But the original cause is Krishna. Huh? Uh, Krishna is known as Satchit Ananda Vigraha, Anadir Adir Govinda, Sarva Karana Karanam, uh, Ishwara Parama, Krishna, Satchit Ananda Vigraha. That means that Krishna is the supreme controller. Uh, his form is eternal, full of complete knowledge and bliss. He is the cause of all other cause, causes. Sarva karana karana. Uh, so he has complete existence. Existence in the full sense of the word. And everything else is his energy. Well, he has two main classes of energy. His internal spiritual energies and his external material energies. The internal energies are eternal and the external energies are temporary. So whenever we see something in this material world, no matter what it is, it has a beginning and an end. Therefore, it is not real in the full sense of the term. Its reality is derivative or relative to some other reality which ultimately goes back to Krishna. Uh, so Krishna's external uh, potency is more or less illusory. It's an illusion. Just like when we go out in the desert and we see what looks like a, a pool of water on the road far away. Huh? And then when we actually get to that place, we find there's actually no water. It's just an optical illusion. So in this world, we, it's the same thing as there. We think that there is enjoyment. We think that there's pleasure. We think that there's uh, fulfillment and so many other things. But these are just like that uh, illusory lake in the desert. When we actually get there, we find out, oh, it's not so great after all. Huh? We were talking the other day about uh, pop stars and, and people like that, you know, movie stars and people who are very famous, very beautiful, very wealthy, and uh, how they are also very disturbed. Huh? You see all these, these big stars, they all have some really serious problems. A lot of times they'll, they'll OD on drugs and, you know, or uh, get very strange, you know. Why? Aren't they just, aren't they happy because they're famous and they're wealthy and they're beautiful and they're talented and all that? No. No, they're not happy. And this, this is one of the worst things that can happen to you, is that, let's say your whole life you want to be wealthy. And then finally, like you win the lottery and you get $10 million, what usually happens? The person destroys themselves. They get strung out or they get cheated out of all their money and they wind up in worse situation than before they were wealthy. Huh? So this is the material world. We think that if I have a lot of money, if I had a lot of fame, if I was very beautiful or this or that, then I would be happy. But if we actually get those things, we find out, oh, they actually just bring more problems. Huh? It's better to remain uh, unknown and simply, uh, you know, just have the, enough for the necessities of life, and not have too much money, not have too much of anything. Uh, because with those things comes many problems. But this is the truth about the illusory energy. Uh, you ask anybody. Uh, I had a, a, one friend of mine was very, very beautiful, physically beautiful. And she was complaining to me what a burden it was 
that everywhere she went, some guy was chasing her, you know. Some, you know, she, was, she never could have any peace because everybody that wanted to be a friend with her uh, wanted to be a friend only because she was very beautiful. And um, after a while, she was like, oh, this beauty is, is a curse. It's not, you know, she felt, she felt like I'm a freak of nature. Just by some, some freak of genetics, you know, some accident of inheritance, I have this beautiful body. And now because of this, I have so much trouble. I wish I was just ordinary looking. <laughs> so just see. Uh, this material world is a world of illusion. What you think is desirable, what you think is good, is actually not good. What you think will finish all your troubles actually would be just the beginning of your troubles. Uh, the real solution to the troubles of life is to become 